Hi everybody, welcome to the Sigma Swimming Freestyle Series. Welcome to the mid-season finale of our freestyle progression. Now the only reason I say that is because everything we've done so far has been focused on the midline. We've talked about streamline, we've talked about kick, we've talked about breathing. This episode we are going to be talking about our rotation. Rotation is vital to freestyle, and in the future we'll talk about it in reference to backstroke. It is the last main element, fundamental element of the midline, working on not deviating and rotating around an axis. Now, the reason why we want to rotate during our freestyle is to focus on making other portions of our stroke easier. First, let's talk about the breath. Breathing is very difficult when seen in terms of being flat. If I don't rotate, I'm really having to crane my neck in order to be able to breathe. Now, if I rotate my, if I rotate my shoulder when I go to breathe, I have a nice open chest looking towards the side of the pool. My breath can maintain that nice body line and talking about last week, keeping my head against my shoulder in a nice, comfortable, straight line. The second point we want to think about is the pulling portion. There's a much more natural pull through the stroke when I'm rotated. It's a lot tougher on the body, and frankly, as someone who's coming off of a shoulder injury when I was younger, it's a little bit more painful to swim flat. The third point, and the most obvious point, is going to be our recovery. We'll get into recovery in a later video, but one thing to think about is what our body is made to do. If I try to recover without rotating, I've really got to contort my arm to get all the way around. This is something that is really unnatural. The body is made to let us do only what it can. The shoulder joint can only do so much. The more we rotate, the more we open up that chest, the more we relax our recovery as opposed to doing this. We'll talk about the recovery in a later video, as I said, but the one thing I do want you to think about when you're doing your rotation during the recovery of freestyle is as if you're giving a hug sideways. Now, giving a hug sideways, we want to think about doing this. If I were to stand up and face you, it would look like this. Now, going into how to rotate. One thing that I really like to use, one of my favorite analogies, is a rolling pin. Most people have rolled out dough at some point in their life in the kitchen. They have a rolling pin in their drawer. You want to think of your head as the handle of that rolling pin, right? It never rotates. It's completely independent of the actual rotation motion. The rest of the body is rotating around the long axis. Freestyle and backstroke, as we'll talk about later, is a long axis stroke. That straight line comes all the way through from our head to our hips to our heels, using the HHH analogy once again. Head, hips, heels. Keeping our head and hips and our heels in line is gonna allow us to maintain that nice, comfortable rotation on the surface. Now, going into other sports, I'd like to really bring into example baseball. A pitcher is not going to strike anybody out at the plate if they're just throwing like this. If I actually turn my body, throw my hips into the throwing motion, really rotating and driving my hips, that's going to allow for a lot more powerful rotation. Baseball as a batter offers the same thing. If I don't rotate my hips, I'm just using my arms. In terms of rotation, the hips are the most fundamental portion of the body. The shoulders don't rotate or don't drive the rotation. The head definitely doesn't drive the rotation and the feet don't drive the rotation. All these other aspects might facilitate this, but at the end of the day, as I've been doing, the hips are driving the rotation. They're the core of the body. They're the ones that control and maintain your posture and your balance in your stroke. Everything else is just facilitating this process talk about more drills and how to make this a lot easier in your stroke at the back half of this video. So now we're going to continue the second half of our rotation video while working on some of these drills. 
The progression is going to go from our legs to our arms over the course of the next three drills that we're going to talk about. First thing I want to do is preface a little bit that we are going to do today's drills with fins as it really helps you focus on the rotation while not having to focus so wholeheartedly on keeping yourself afloat. But as you continue to feel more comfortable with these drills, we encourage you to try to do them without fins as they will mimic real freestyle and just real swimming in general a little bit better. But by all means, we always recommend trying things with gear if it does make it easier at first. So I'm here with Rowan today. We're gonna to work on our first drill, which is six kick switch. The six kick switch, you're just going to have your arms at your side and all I want you to do is rotate every six kicks from hip to hip. So you're gonna pause on one side, six kicks, rotate to the other hip. Does that make sense? Yes. Awesome, whenever you're ready. Now the big focus with this is continuing to open your hips and address the side walls. You wanna focus on opening up, allowing your shoulder and hips to get dry so that we know that we're actually rotating. If your shoulder is not getting dry, then we know that we're not rotating enough and thus making our stroke a little bit tighter. As you can see, head is straight, shoulders are coming all the way out. She's doing a great job to keep her body in line, which is still the main focus. If you track back to our first video, if you haven't been following along, make sure body position is still the most paramount in your stroke. Awesome job. So now, the next thing that we're gonna focus on is more so a progression of our first drill. As opposed to one, two, it's more one A, one B. So this drill is going to be our three beat kick or three beat rotation. Some people call it a six beat kick, some people call it a three beat kick. It's all necessarily the same, just a difference of lingo. All you're going to do, three kicks on each side in a constant rotation. So just like freestyle, you're going to be rotating constantly, just keeping our kick nice and consistent, focusing on getting our shoulder and hips dry, just like you just did. Okay. Sound good? Awesome, whenever you're ready. So now this one's a little bit more relative to actual freestyle, because as you can see, it's more of a constant rotation from hip to hip, just as if we were using our arms and swimming up and down the pool. Once again, focusing on body line. She's doing a great job focusing on keeping her head perfectly straight, rotating from hip to hip in a constant kicking motion. That's the biggest focus, allowing yourself to keep a constant roll. Awesome. Now, now that we've focused on our legs, then we're going to add in our arms. Once again, adding another preface here, this drill is great for recovery as well, which we'll talk about in a couple videos from now. But thinking about it more in the context of rotation, the focus is allowing ourselves to get our shoulder and hips dry just like we were doing on the kick. So sailboat drill is going to be imagining that you're holding a bucket over the water in a nice relaxed motion like this. Count one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and then I want you to switch to the other side. So rotating three counts, and then rotate to the other side, three counts, all while keeping your body position perfectly straight. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> whenever you're ready. Big focus now that we're adding our arms is continuing to be relaxed. You don't want to fight the water. I know I've said it before. You want to be as relaxed and smooth as possible allowing ourselves to not overuse any unnecessary muscles, wasting any unnecessary energy. Nice and relaxed, head position is great, body position is great, allowing yourself to pause from hip to hip, focusing on that rotation in a swimming context. You do these three drills just as she's done, you are on the way to becoming a great freestyler and allowing yourself to really progress in your swimming career. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, ring the bell, comment with any questions. If you're in the DFW area and you'd like more information on swim lessons or swim team, be sure to visit www.sigmaswim.org.